Lesson 3.1, integers and absolute value. Our objective that you're going to learn by watching your video is to read and write integers and find the absolute value of an integer. Negative integers are integers that are less than zero. They are written with a negative sign in front of them. Positive integers are integers greater than zero. They are written with a plus sign or no sign at all. Typically, it's no sign at all. We see integers in our real life all the time. It's just a matter of if we know it. When we're talking about temperature, we have positive numbers. Right now we're in the 80s, 90s, the heat of August. Or we're talking about negative numbers. In December and January, we love when we get into the negative 12s and negative 15s, and then sometimes we don't have school because it's so cold. Um, money, we can always have positive money. That's a good thing. If we're in debt, we owe people money, that's negative money. We don't have any money to our name and we actually owe on top of what we don't have. So that would be negative. Debt, we can be really high on a mountain or we can be really low, below sea level in a valley. Um, golf, I'm not really sure about the game of golf, but from what I understand it involves your swings. Um, increases and decreases, whether we're moving up or down can be positive numbers or negative numbers. Losing weight, you're gaining weight, you're positive numbers, you're losing weight, it's negative. Um, try to come up with ideas of where you're seeing integers in your daily life. Somewhere we see integers on a daily basis or when you're looking for line. On the left, we have our negative numbers. So everything that's lower than zero on our number line is a negative number. Zero is neither positive, doesn't count in either one. And then all the numbers to the right are positive. So anything greater than zero, so 0 0.1 is a positive integer. Integers can be graphed on a number line. To represent an integer on the number line, you draw a dot on the line at its location. Okay, example one, writing integers. 1a, write an integer that represents a situation of an average temperature of five degrees below normal. Five degrees below normal. So if we're talking about below, we're not going up, which is a good thing, we're going down, so that is negative. So we would write negative five in that situation. 1B, we're writing an integer that represents a situation of a snowfall of four inches above normal. So that is a plus four or positive four. Example two, we are going to be graphing integers. So 2a, it says graph the set of integers. They want us to graph four, negative six, and zero. So what integers need to be graphed? Well, those right there, four, negative six, and zero. Are negative integers on the right or the left of zero? So when we're looking at this, we need to remember that. Our positives are on the right and our negatives are on the left. So four is a positive. So we know that that's gonna go on the right and we're gonna draw a little tiny, tiny dot, if it'll let me, at four. And then we draw a dot at negative six. And then another dot at zero. So we just graphed those integers. We didn't do anything fancy, that's just drawing a dot to show that that's where the data is. 2B says graph the set of integers, negative one, three, and negative two. So again, we're, what integers need to be graphed. This is what you, these are questions down here that are questions that you can ask yourself if you're trying to do this on your own and I'm not sitting next to you and you need help. These are good questions that will help prompt you. So you ask yourself, what integers need to be graphed? Well negative one, three, and negative two. So then I say, are negative integers on the right or the left? They're on the left. So I look and I say negative one is on the left. And I also need to graph negative two, so I'm gonna go ahead and graph that. And then three is over on the right and the positives. So I graph that. Numbers that are the same distance from zero on a number line have the same absolute value. So really absolute value means how far away from zero is a number. And these lines that are around this negative five and around this five, they're drawn like this, just straight lines. Those lines, basically every time you see them, you should ask yourself how far from zero. I'm not gonna write that word out, but it means how far from zero, okay? So 
if we have a negative 5, it's right here, and it is 5 units from 0, which is what it appears representing. And then we have positive 5. How far away is it from 0? We have positive 5, and it is also 5 units from 0. So that's why it says that numbers that are the same distance from 0 on a number line have the same absolute value. So we have negative 5 and 5. They are opposites, and they have the same absolute value. Example 3, evaluate the absolute value of negative 4. So what integer is used in this expression? That is negative 4. And it says, how many units is negative 4 from 0? So if we can't answer that off the top of our head, we can graph it. So we can look and see that negative 4, negative 4 is right here, and 0 is right here. And how far away are they from each other? They're 1, 2, 3, and 4. So they are 4 away. How many units negative 4 from 0 is 4? So the absolute value of this integer will always be positive because it's always four spaces. No matter which direction, it is a positive four. Evaluate the absolute value of negative 25. Now, negative 25 is too big for a number line, so we have to do this one without being able to see it visually. So what integer is used in the expression? It is negative 25. And how many units is negative 25 from zero? It is 25 units from zero. And yes, that's a typo. It says negative 5. It's supposed to say negative 25. Is the absolute value of an integer always negative or positive? It is always positive. So my answer to this problem that just says evaluate the absolute value of negative 25 would be 25. And that would be all I needed to write. Example 4, evaluate absolute value. Here we get a teeny tiny bit trickier. So it says 4a. The absolute value of negative 5 minus the absolute value of 2. So the first thing we have to do is answer, what is the absolute value of negative 5? And that is 5. What is the absolute value of 2? That is 2. Which operation is between the two absolute value signs? That's subtraction. So what is 5 minus 2? That is 3. So that is my answer. Sorry, my mom's calling me. It's got to be important. Okay, 5a everybody's favorite word problems. Nick climbs 30 feet up a rock wall. So that's up a rock wall and then climbs 20 feet down to a landing area. How many feet does Nick climb? So if he climbed up 30, that's going to be a positive 30. Plus, because we're adding how far he climbed all together, and then he climbs 22 feet down. So he went down, but he still climbed a total of 22 feet. So we take the absolute value of that. So we take 30. <laughs> this is having trouble. 30 plus 22. And how far did he climb altogether? He climbed 52 feet. Last problem, Megan's dog gained six pounds and then lost three pounds. How much did Megan's dog's weight change? So Megan gained, Megan's dog, not Megan, Megan's dog gained six pounds. So that's a positive six or plus six and then lost three pounds. Whoa, lost three pounds. And that's the absolute value of three pounds because we're trying to figure out how much did the dog's weight change over time? So six is positive because it was going up. The dog was gaining weight. Three is negative because the dog was losing weight. And the absolute value of six is six. The absolute value of negative three is three. So six plus three is nine. And you see I have a typo there. It says how many feet did he climb? It's supposed to be how much did the dog's weight change? And it's nine pounds. Looks like 91. I'm going to rewrite it. Nine pounds. 